Hi, my name is Professor Kawamura. I'm a research professor at Vanderbilt University. In this presentation, I would like to share with you my long research experience in developing coin tube robots. My plan is as follows. I will first go over our approach to coin tube robotics, including some history. And then I'll go over uh, detail of key uh, concept and modules called cognitive control and working memory. And then I'll uh, finish with very short concluding remarks. Now, historically, we started uh, developing our uh, humanoid robot at Vanderbilt in 19. 85 when we established research center called Center for Intelligent Systems. And uh, this is the first robot we developed and this was meant to be a robotic aid to the disabled. And then uh, we did some basic research in behavior teaching and learning. And this was the goal, robotic companion to humans. And this was the uh, kind of vision we had uh, for the humanoid robot Isaac. Now, uh, in the 1980s, there were no commercially available humanoid robots. So we spent a great deal of time uh, developing both hardware and uh, software. And for hardware, hardware uh, we decided to use artificial muscle called uh, Lavachator because this is safe to uh, work with humans. For this software, we decided to use multi-agent based system and we developed our own uh, software architecture called the Intelligent Machine Architecture, which include uh, what we call atomic agent. This is a very simple agent, just responsible for, uh, say, uh, vision or voice, etc., motor, etc. And then we had the two. Uh, high level agent, one is called human agent, the other one is self agent. And uh, this was the innovation I proposed to the uh, group. And human agent basically represent the uh, users. So next time when same user comes, robot uh, can work immediately with this user. Now self agent was meant to uh, be a high level agent responsible for monitoring various state of robot, including emotion, attention, etc. But uh, we didn't go too far, so eventually uh, these are uh, abandoned. Now, uh, in early 2000, uh, field of cognitive robotics was just started, and in 2006, Professor Brown uh, of the University of Reading, UK, and I co-organized a workshop on cognitive robotics, intelligence, and control, and asked the uh, participant to list key features of cognitive robotics. And I summarize in uh, five areas here. And as you can see, uh, all areas are still under active research. Now, uh, if you are interested in seeing more, uh, you can read this article. 
So uh, today's presentation will focus on the third one, ability to develop cognition through sensory motor association. So our approach again is a multi-agent system based on working memory system. And our approach was first to understand how memories, particularly working memory, affect the selection of actions in human. So we studied literature in psychology, neuroscience, etc. And then we developed multi-agent based robot control architecture and uh, implemented computational mechanism for key modules such as working memory system, which are uh, show in this presentation. And then we evaluated performance. So this was the uh, first cognitive robot architecture we proposed in 2004. And eventually it uh, got very complicated but uh, basically we retained uh, three long-term, short-term and working memory system. And basically uh, focus on working memory system as the uh, interface to the world. Again, you can look at this paper, which I send to the organizer. So what is going to be control? Well, uh, according to the psychology field, human brain is known to process a variety of inputs in parallel, ignore distractions to focus on the tasks in hand, including switching tasks. And this process is generally known or called as cognitive or executive control. And this is the one of the uh, literature we reviewed. So uh, in our architecture, we uh, implemented the cognitive control inside uh, Isaac using uh, various modules or agent, uh, including sensory ego sphere, attention network, emotion, working memory system, and the central executive agent. Now, uh, sensory ego sphere is a data structure emulating human visual memory structure, uh, which was developed by a member of our center, uh, Professor Alan Peters, and uh, description uh, in the uh, paper we published in 2004, which again, I uh, sent to the organizer. And so if you are interested in, you may contact Professor Alan Peters. Now, what is working memory? It's a memory system that stores a small number, four to five, or some psychologists say up to seven, of chunks of information, protecting them from interference from other processing systems and directly influences the generation of behavior. And this is uh, one example. If you play chess, you can uh, guess, but this chess master will uh, walk around and play with those participants, in this case, or boys uh, by stopping at age every place 30 seconds or less and play one uh, move and move next one. So we used to reinforcement based learning system for uh, bonding percept with motion and stored in working memory. And I will show you a video. 
And then we train the logging memory system uh, using this simple uh, setup. We put a bunch of uh, bean bags in front of Isaac and train Isaac three motion behaviors, reach, wave, handshake. And then we uh, shuffle bean bags and ask Isaac to reach to the colored bean bag. So this is uh, video one. We just show you information flow. And video two uh, show you uh, training. Okay, so I'll stop here now and show video. Isaac uses the working memory system to maintain task related information. Candidate chunks of information are created from Isaac's sensory egosphere, which holds perceptual information, and from long term memory, which holds procedural information for the performance of behaviors. Once created, the chunks are stored within the candidate chunks list. When given a task, working memory actively maintains only those chunks it has learned are relevant to the current task. These chunks are used by the activator agent to guide task execution. I say, it's So today, I introduced our history of developing a multi-agent-based cognitive robot called Isaac. And in particular, I explained working memory-based cognitive control mechanism and was shown to be an important skill for cognitive robots. So thank you for watching the video. Hope you learned something. Bye.